Floats with Henry Morgan. Dolores Pizarro goes to Diaz's home to tell him that there is no news of the three fugitives. Learning that no one knows of her visit and that she's on her way into the country, Diaz strangles her to obtain possession of the Aztec necklace. Realizing that it will be three days before he leaves with the Spanish fleet, he goes into hiding. Meanwhile, Kitty, Antoinette, Jeffrey and Hero are in the hills, and Jeffrey is in the grip of the fever. Jealously, Kitty tends to him, claiming him as her man. Antoinette tries to make her realize that such a love is impossible. The day before the British ship is due to take them off Cuba, Jeffrey regains consciousness. The next night, they make their way to the cliff top, at the bottom of which they are to meet the British ship. Suddenly, Kitty sees in the darkness a figure. Shouting a warning, she throws herself in front of Jeffrey, and the next instant she is lying on the ground with a knife in her back. Oh, Jeffrey, look, a knife in her back. Come on over there, throw it. Don't worry, Master Jeffrey, I'll see him. I can catch him, I'll get it for you. Jeffrey, the knife was meant for you. I saw it coming. Are you so foolish, girl? I couldn't let you die, Jeffrey. You have everything to live for. I was just going back to what I came from. You won't die. I won't let you die, Kitty. I want to. I'd be much better off. Much happier in another world. I've not been a good woman, Jeffrey. As well you know. You think that's going to count against me? Not after what you've just done, Kitty. Whatever your sins are, you've atoned for them fully. I really did love you, Jeffrey. You're the only man I ever did love. The British boat will be here before long. He'll get away. Both you and Antoinette. You can go into that new life. There was no new life for me. I tried to pretend there would be. I tried to make myself believe that I could will everything to be different. But I know that couldn't be. It's getting hard to talk, Jerry. Bend down closer. You mustn't try to talk, Kitty. The boat will be here soon. We'll get you aboard the ship. No, no. I've lived my life. Such it is. But I don't mind dying. Knowing that you'll be happy. Kiss me once more, Jeffrey, so... So that I might die with the taste of it lingering upon my lips. Kitty. Goodbye. Anything I can do, Jeffrey. I went a short distance away. I thought you would want to say goodbye. Thank you, Antoinette, but there's nothing anybody can do now. Is she? Is she dead? Yes. I wonder who the assassin was. Are you there, Mr. Jeffrey? Are you there? I got him. Keep your voice down, hero. I want to arouse the whole countryside? I caught the low nothing's gun. I told him that if he starts wriggling about too much, I'll break his arm just like a tallow candle. Bring him over here. Let me have a look at him. Sorry. The knife had missed you, eh, Mr. Hunter? Yet you. I thought fate would decree we'd meet again, but I didn't think it would be in such tragic circumstances. Yes, the knife missed me, only because it found Kitty first. Kitty? Ah, so my aim, she has not so good, eh? Huh? Are you alone? What are you doing on this part of the coast? Maybe I'm looking for you, eh? I know that you're alone. If you'd had others with you, the noise you made would have brought them to the spot. Considering the feeling that exists between us, you're very arrogant, Dietz. I'm not frightened of you. I've never been. But you, uh, you are still a cripple from the torturing, eh? <laughs> You look as though if I blow on your heart, you'd fall over. This man, Master Jeffrey, he's the man who give you all that pain, eh? Nothing to the pain he'll get when he is retaken. So you're the man what gives Master Jeffrey all the pain. You make Master Jeffrey mighty sick man. 
You know, frightened of Massa Jeffrey. Well, maybe you be frightened of me, Hero, eh? Yeah, leave me alone. Don't touch him, Hero. He isn't worth it. Massa Jeffrey, you're still a sick man. You still can't hardly move. This man is going to be sorry. Right. What are you going to do? I was going to let you go for just a little while. So you have two hands free, and Hero have two hands free. And then we see who's the better man. Now you fight, Oh, yeah. Jeffrey, what is going to happen? I don't know. It's dark. I... No, it's light enough to see them. It's too dark to recognize who's winning. Your old foot slipped in the cross. He is down. He has got him. Oh, why am I so helpless? Oh, you black nigger. I've got your eyes out. Save your breath for fighting. Your old can suddenly wriggle. Look. He's thrown to your top. They're both on their feet. Look together again. Hero has the ass's no. body in a bite like grip. No. He's squeezing the life from him. My ribs, you, you smashed them. And while you die, you yeah. remember all the pain that Massa Jeffrey went through. Yes, yeah, smashing my ribs. Yeah, smashing my ribs. Let him go. Do you hear me, Hero? Let him go. You can't crush a man to death. Let him go. I'll let him go when he's dead. Oh. Let him go. Do you hear me? Let him go. I can't stand it. All right, Massa Jeffrey. Go to the bus. I'll let him go. Oh, oh my ribs. You broke my ribs. He is staggering backwards. Look out, yet. Look out. Ah! Too late. He's over. Then, Master Jeffrey, I didn't kill him. But I gives him just a little push. Yes. We'll call it an accident, hero. Listen. Listen. Oh, it's the boat. It's come. The British ship is here. Oh, come on now. But look here. Jeffrey, on the grass. Must have fallen from that man's pocket. It is a necklace. The Aztec necklace. <laughs> I never thought we would see it again. I can't tell you, Hunter, how sorry I am for all the trials you've been through on my account. I brought back news of the fleet. That's what you wanted. That's what I went for. As a reward for your services, I've left in the charge of Sir Thomas Mufford treasure to the value of thousands of pounds. It's for you, Hunter. Oh, but don't, don't try to refuse it because I won't hear of it. I understand, Captain. Thank you very much. Sir Thomas has his kinswoman at last. His real kinswoman. I have the Aztec necklace. We must be grateful to you for that, Hunter. Antoinette's rescue was just by chance and good luck. But poor Kitty. Yes, poor Kitty. Well, I'm sailing in two days' time. I regret that you can't come with me. But in your present state of health, it would be impossible. I understand. I hope you have a successful trip. I have no doubt I'll lay the city of Panama in ruins. Oh, and by the way, Hunter... No mention of my plans to anyone. Not even Antoinette de Lacey. Of course not. I'll not make the same mistake again. Tell me, what are your plans? Sir Thomas has asked me to stay with him here in Government House. Just by regain my health, then I'll go back to England. Good. Ah, oh, Morgan. I heard you were here. I want to speak to you. Yes, Sir Thomas. Your ships are in the harbour, fully provisioned. If you're my vice admiral, I've signed all your requisition orders, given you what you've asked for without questions. But now it seems that your ships are ready to sail at any moment. That is right, Sir Thomas. I know that your departure is in connection with news that Hunter has brought you back. Possibly. Are you going to ignore my warning? You know, I've had strict instructions to wipe the buccaneers off the seas. Morgan. Should you be planning such an expedition, I'll have no choice but to carry out my orders. I've lived my own life without interference, and I'll continue to do so. A fig for your warning and your threats, Sir Thomas. I'm frightened of no man. up here on the hill overlooking the bay. You've been so good to me, Antoinette, these last few months. I'm my old self once again. 
A man couldn't have had a more attentive nurse. I want you to get well again, Jeffrey. But you yourself, Antoinette, have not been well. The hardships you went through have told on your health. I am feeling better. But I am going away soon, Jeffrey. I am returning to England. So am I. Maybe we could go together. Antoinette, these last few months, I have come to know something. I want to talk to you about it. No, Jeffrey. You must not talk about it. I do not want to hear it. But, Antoinette... No, Jeffrey. Oh, look out there in the bay, coming around the headlands. One of our ships. As I live and breathe, that... That's Morgan's. He's returned. Quickly, Antoinette. Let's go at once to Port Royal. You wish to see me, Sir Dennis? Yes. Captain Morgan and his fleet have returned. He'll be here at any moment now. Hunter, I want you to be here when he arrives. Well, oh. Sir Thomas, I'm here. Back again in Port Royal. Success once again. <laughs> Success in what? Well, here's news for you, Sir Thomas. I sacked the city of Panama. I've left it in ruins with not one stone standing upon another. And the wealth. Wait until you see the ships. They're weighed down with all the jewels and the money. Oh, what a trip. Never has such a feat been equaled in all the world. Me and my small handful of men crossing the isthmus and sacking the city of Panama. Why, the whole world will ring of this exploit for centuries. Oh. So it was the city of Panama, then. Captain Morgan, you're under arrest. Captain Morgan looks unbelievingly at Sir Thomas Mockford. Will Sir Thomas have the courage to carry out his threat? Listen to the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan.